Shalom, everybody. My name is Eliyahu Shear, and I'm coming to you from my organization called Chesed Ve'emet. You can find my site on www.lovingkindness.co. And of course, if you've managed to find this video, you'll probably see that there are many, many other videos that I've put out here in teaching Torah. That is what I do. I teach privately in groups and live shiurim online. If you want to learn in person, you're welcome to come to Yerushalayim and come through and sit next to me and learn Torah as well. Um, I'm also a sofer stum, so I am involved in teaching people how to become sofrim as well. And again, we can learn online if you want to. We learn all the halakhot, and I will give you all the guidelines that you need to know to actually do the writing as well. It's a, a long process. It's definitely not a short course, but if you're serious, this is a wonderful thing to do. I'm also a chatan teacher. I teach young men in the process of getting married, they're just about to get married and they need to know the laws of family purity of what's called Tarat HaMishpacha. I teach them the various halachot, the laws that they need to know as they prepare to embark on their life journey of being married and starting a family. All of these things are done online and anybody who wants to learn is welcome to be in touch with me directly. Now today what I wanted to do is something just a little bit special and to help out those who are interested in learning Gemara. Now, the Talmud, of course, is the oral law, and it was given to Moshe on Har Sinai just as the written Torah was given to him. But the catch of this whole system is that as it was transmitted orally throughout time, difficulties in the generations began to persist with regards to people being able to remember certain things and so on and so forth. And as the decline occurred within the different generations, the oral law was eventually codified into a form that was called the Mishnah, which was written by Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi in the early part of the beginning of the counting of the counting that we do today, meaning from about the year 150, let's say, it was compiled. And thereafter, the rabbis continued to discuss the various matters in the Mishnah. And this eventually led to the building up of the Gemara, which was ultimately written by Rav Ashi and Ravina. They were responsible for putting the entire Talmud together, editing it, not that they were responsible for writing it as such. All the different opinions that are expressed, of course, were the opinions that were given throughout the generations. When people come to learn the Talmud, most people find it exceptionally difficult. The analysis, the language, there's a lot to learn. But nobody should feel afraid to embark in learning the Talmud because within the Talmud itself are all the keys to life. One can learn about everything that pertains to all matters of life. Of course, one is going to learn all the laws that are applicable for a Jew to follow, whether we're talking about the laws of Kashrut, whether we're talking about the laws of Shabbos, whether we're talking about the laws of family purity, or whether we're talking about the laws, quite frankly, of Sofrut, as we just discussed earlier on, and all the different laws that we have today. Of course, throughout the generations, the rabbis continued to discuss the different elements of the Talmud, and they began to codify it into different forms. Today, for example, we have the Rambam, Rav Moshe ben Maimon, who lived from 1135 to 1204, and he gave us a comprehensive halachic guide so that we can understand what is the practical halakha that I can gain from the Talmud. Because already in those days, people were not able to understand the Talmud as it was written down. They found it difficult to follow. Let's not forget that the Talmud is written in Aramaic. So for those people who don't speak Aramaic, which there might be quite a lot of people today who don't speak Aramaic. So for those people who don't speak Aramaic, it becomes a closed book. And so in the days of the Rambam, already he saw this need that the Talmud had to be codified into a form that the average person would be able to follow and to be able to understand what the Talmud was saying. He compiled this into a work of 1,000 chapters, 40, uh, 1, chapters, 
consisting of 14 books known as the Yad HaChazaka. And of course, today, this is a very well-known work, which is studied by many, many people. Later on, and of course, today, for example, through the initiative of the Rebavi Cherebi many years ago, that he instituted that people should strive to learn three chapters of Rambam a day, if they could, even one chapter, even from his book of the Sefer HaMitzvot. Whatever one can do in learning the practical halakha from the Rambam is certainly advanced. Fantastic. Anyway, as time progressed, once again, they, they called this, there was this need that called out and said, you know, we need more of this practical aspect of halakha that needed to be codified for people that still found it difficult to understand various aspects, what the Rambam might have been saying, do we follow every single opinion? And so Rabbi Yosef Cairo came, Yosef Cairo from, uh, from Spain, he was one of the people to have to flee from Spain when he was about four years old. He was born in 1488 and he lived until 1575. The majority of his life was spent in the city of Tzfat, where he compiled this beautiful book of, the, of his called the Shulchan Aruch. And the Shulchan Aruch, of course, is the standard guide to all of Halakha today. Anybody who doesn't admit to the truth of the Shulchan Aruch and every single point, really, that it contains is a person who is not really devoted to what the true values of what the Torah is really all about. Today, if a person wants to get smicha and he wants to become a rabbi, not only, of course, does he have to show his proficiency in being able to understand the Talmud, but he has to clearly know these halachot that pertain into the Shulchan Aruch, all the laws are codified. And in fact, when Rabbi Yosef Cairo codified this work of the Shulchan Aruch, he did it by means of relying upon three of the main Torah authorities throughout the period of time that had lived before him. These people, of course, were called the Rishonim, and the Rambam was one of the people that he relied upon. So the other two people were the Rif and the Rosh, Rabbi Yitzhak Alfasi and Rabbeinu Asher. And of course, for those who are interested to know, you'll see behind me, I actually have two sets of very beautiful books. One set on my left here, you can see, is the Tur, which was written by the son of the Rosh, and thereafter was commentated on by numerous rabbis. And of course, all of this material needs to be studied. And if you go further down, there you go, on my right, on the top shelf, you'll see my Shulchan Aruch, and that, of course, is by Rabbi Yosef Cairo, with all the commentaries inside. But the point of this video wasn't really to go into any depth of the different parts of the Halakha, which require much, much study on their own and a lot of detail to know exactly who's who, what their points of view are, the directions that they take and how we need to study the Shulchan Aruch and the Tur and the Rambam, of course, so that we ourselves can start to learn what is the practical aspect, what is the real halakha that we need to learn. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're coming to this big question that people ask. They say, I'm coming to study Gemara, but they say, Rabbi, where should I begin? I'm quite new to this. And I really want to learn how to learn. Now, there's a difference in a person who picks up an English Gemara and he reads through. Like, for example, he's reading a comic, you know, or he's reading a novel or whatever he chooses to read. He picks up the book and he just looks at it and he just skims through what it says. Very interesting. Well, if a person reads the Talmud in this way, he'll walk away with some interesting stories in his head. And he'll even walk away with some interesting discussions about the halakha. But one thing that he won't walk away with is the knowledge in learning how to learn that page of Gemara. And there's the difference. And when people come to me, for example, and they say to me, they'd like to learn Gemara, what should they do? Let's say the person is 30 years old, let's say he's 40 years old, let's say he's 60 years old. Each person comes with their own knowledge and they come with their own question relative to where they are holding in their own life. So for one person, he doesn't know any Hebrew. And of course, certainly he knows no Aramaic whatsoever. And he asked the question, well, what should I do? How should I spend my time? I only have a limited amount of time. What am I going to do at this time so that I'll be successful in learning Gemara? And the first question that we need to establish is, what is your purpose in learning the Gemara? If your purpose is to learn how to learn that page, in other words, you want to master the arts, of translating that page yourself and understand the discussions, the ins and the outs, the gives and the takes of the Gemara. Rebbe so-and-so said such and such, and Rebbe so-and-so said such and such. And how do we follow? Who are we going to follow? Whose opinion? What's the practical halakha? How do I learn that out? 
What does this word come to teach me? How do I understand the rest of the Gemara based upon that word? That's one question. If the person comes and says, you know, all that I really want to do is just follow some English translation and I want to just enjoy the shiur for what it is, then that's also okay. That's fantastic. Wherever the person is holding in his life, he must just decide before he embarks in this journey, he must decide where it is that he wants to go with it. But in this particular video, what I would like to address is the question that people who are interested in learning the Gemara as it should be studied properly to master it, that is the discussion that I'd like to address in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be suggesting some wonderful books that you can purchase and I'm going to be showing you some of them. And if afterwards I have some time, I'm going to put together a small uh, video clip uh, of the different books that they can be presented on the screen very nicely so that everybody can see what they look like in brand new condition. You'll notice that my books look very old. Now I must tell you about myself, that I love books and I love reading. And uh, when I read, generally speaking, my books look absolutely in brand new condition. But every now and again, there's this type of book that I go through so many times that after I've been through it too many times, it starts to just wear and tear. Well, you'll see those books today. And if your books ever get, ever get like that, it's not necessarily a bad sign. As long as you are using the book so much that it gets into this condition, well, that's okay. But otherwise, of course, everybody should treat their books with the respect that they are due and to love the book so that, of course, one will gain the most for many, many years to come. So we're going to start off, I'm going to take a, 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 a leap into the world of Hebrew and into the world of Aramaic. And the first book that I'm going to show you is a book that I started with many, many, many years ago. This particular book is a newer edition of the one that I used to use, so it looks in better condition, and it is called Higher Sword. And this book speaks about the fundamentals of Hebrew. In other words, if you are coming to learn Hebrew, which you're going to need for both the Gemara and all other books in Torah, I highly recommend that you read it. And by the way, let me just tell you, I'm not being paid anything from any of these companies to show these books. This is just my love. I love sharing the beauty of the books that I read. Of course, if anybody wants me to share a video about their own book and send it through for me to read, I'm only too happy and delighted to read through it and share my own review. But this, these particular books are books that I've gone through myself I've enjoyed them so much that I like to share them with others. And this was a golden book for me to read. You'll see that in the book, How You Saw It, it is very comprehensive. It gives, the, it gives some Hebrew passages to learn. It gives questions. It gives answers, translation exercises. It gives basic vocab. And it gives the way that we have to understand Hebrew grammar. Because ultimately, a person who doesn't understand Hebrew grammar is not going to be able to succeed in Hebrew at all. Of course, the more that one can speak the language, the better one's Hebrew can be. But to learn Torah, you don't have to necessarily be able to speak the language. You just have to be able to understand the Hebrew. So I strongly recommend that if anybody's interested, like they need to learn Chumash, and they need to start learning the Gemara, which is Aramaic, but the Chumash is in Hebrew. Start off with a book like this, how you saw it, and get to understand some basic vocabulary. That's the first thing that everybody needs to do. You'll probably pick up a thousand words or so in this book, maybe slightly less. I'm not sure. I didn't count them ever. But they're important words, and they're certainly the most common words that you will come to see in the Hebrew language as you progress along your journey. My rule is, if you know nothing of Hebrew, start off with the goal of something like learning 10 new Hebrew words every day. If you can learn 10 Hebrew words every day, you can build yourself up a, a great vocabulary within one year that will give you a tremendous start in all of your Torah books that you begin to learn. Within two years, you'll have a fantastic vocabulary that will keep you going. And of course, if you continue that and you start reading more and more, you'll just, you'll only add to it and to your advantage. Now, one of the other books that I picked up many, many years ago, I'm going back already over 30 years, at least 30 years. I picked up this book. I saw that a teacher of mine had recommended it. It's called How the Hebrew Language Grew. And it is written by Edward Horowitz. Now, I, I, I'm not 
not so fond of the introduction that he makes in his book, where he discusses the nature and the origin of the Hebrew letters, where he speaks about Hebrew having uh, originated from cavemen and, well, basically the idea that people would use to write on stones and the pictures turned into letters and various other things. I'm not saying it exactly as he's put it here. Uh, don't quote me on every single word that I'm saying over here, but check the book out yourself and you'll understand what I mean by that statement. That is the only chapter that I felt a little bit upset about because being involved in Torah study, of course, Hebrew is a language that comes from God only, and it was the language in which the world was created. The software is involved in writing the Hebrew letters, and of course, those letters contain energy and power, which causes a reaction, both on the level of the cluff that it rests on, as well as when we read those words. So that was only the only chapter that I really wasn't happy about. But other than that, I really found this book to be absolutely fantastic. It gave me guidelines of understanding the structure of the Hebrew language. And I suggest it if you are having difficulty understanding how the language actually works, because he describes the story behind the nature of a verb. He explains the seven forms of the verb, and he shows you how easy it is to understand these forms of the verbs so that you yourself, when you encounter certain words, can already establish what type of a word it is, even if you didn't really know the translation directly. I think it is a superb book. I think it is outstanding. And therefore, I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to get a start in Hebrew. But that's not, of course, the point of this whole video. The Hebrew wasn't the discussion. We were getting into the Gemara. But I want to share these books with you because I felt them to be so beneficial that if one takes them all into account and one builds up on them, we can learn from everybody. And if there are parts that we don't uh, particularly agree with, that's okay also. We just move along and say, that is not what I have come to understand from what the Torah is and skip over those little points. There's so much other material to be gained from there that you certainly won't lose out. Now, this work over here is known as the Alkali Dictionary, written by Rabbi Ruvain Rab, Alkali. And in it, you will find this is only the Hebrew to English section. The entire work consists of five thick volumes. I purchased this over 30 years ago. And you can see how well this book has been used, so much so that I had to get it rebound. The binding was not good. And after I'd used it numerous times, it fell apart. And when I got it rebound, I was so ecstatic with it because I've never had a problem since I got it rebound. You will see in this dictionary here, thousands upon thousands of words. And really what the advantage of this dictionary is, is that it gives sentences as well. And very often when one is looking up a word in the Chumash or something like that, as one sees the root of the, of, the, of the word that one is looking at, very often one sees the verse quoted underneath it with a translation. So it's really fantastic. And if you're looking for a quality dictionary, and of course I'm referring to something other than just going online and typing in the translate such and such and see what you get out of it. If you're looking for a quality dictionary, this Elkanah dictionary has been one of my best friends in learning Torah, my whole life. And I strongly suggest that if it interests you, do try to get a hold of a copy of this dictionary. It is highly, it's a very rare dictionary to get hold of today. But if you can get, your, get yourself this dictionary, do go out and get it, especially the Hebrew to the English section, even if you don't do the English to the Hebrew section and you get just this one volume, because the one volume itself will give you the basics of finding your way around practically every single Torah text that is out there. It is a fantastic dictionary. I cannot recommend it high, more highly than I've just said so now. Okay, we're moving along now. I'd just like to share some of my other wonderful books that I've picked up along the years and how they've helped me as well. This particular book that I hold in my hand, Miklala Lashon, written by uh, Sheikh de Chacham over here, as you see, is a book that takes the three root letters that appear in every word, and it gives you perhaps 20, sometimes 30 other words that are similar to that word just by adding a letter at the beginning of the word, or a letter at the end, or two letters, or in the middle, etc., etc. And you can come away with learning one word, and afterwards you find you've learned 20 or 30 words just by glancing at that one word. It's a fantastic book. If you can get hold of it and you're interested in improving your Hebrew, do read this book. It is outstanding. 
You have to learn a, a word a day. Remember what we said. You've got to do two, you've got to do 10 Hebrew words every single day. So take that book as well and go through one word every day. Every day, take one word, the three roots, three, three root letters, and go through all the different combinations of that root letter and learn all of those words. This that we've discussed up until now is the Hebrew side of improving one's vocabulary so that one can learn a text in Hebrew, any text, certainly the Chumash, and certainly the Mishnah, certainly the Rambam, and so on and so forth. If you're learning on your own, and you don't have somebody to learn with, and you pick up these books as you go along, even though it might seem to be a little frustrating in the beginning, you will see that eventually you will be able to understand the text, you'll pick up the words, and the next thing you know, you'll be able to read this text as if you spoke a fluent Hebrew already. So I highly advise all these books. And now we're moving to the Gemara. And the first thing I'm going to suggest is if you have not yet studied any Gemara, pick up this wonderful book called The Gateway to Talmud. As you see, my book has fallen apart completely. I've read this book, I cannot tell you how many times. And you can, you can see the whole book has basically just fallen apart. I really need to get it rebound, but the cost of binding, I may as well go buy myself a new book. But I have read this book so many times that the whole thing has just fallen apart. And in this book, which is written by Rabbi Merit Svi Bergman, if I'm not mistaken, he was, he's the, uh, the son-in-law son of Rabbi Shach, who, who was the Rosh Hashiva of Panovich. And this is a fantastic book because what it tells us, I'm just going to read some of the headings that appear in the index, in the table of contents here, the chain of transmission from Moses to the prophets, the men of the great assembly, the peers, the Tanaim, foundation of the Mishnah, Sifra, Sifra, Tos, Tosefta, Brysis, Mechilta, the Jerusalem Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud, Rabbanan Saburayan Gaonim, a review of the generations, names and titles of Talmudic sages, principles for deciding the law, terminology of the Talmud, select biography, a bibliography of works of Hazal, weights, measures, and currencies, the 13 rules of biblical exegesis, and uh, those are the main, those are the, those are the uh, headings that appear in the, in the uh, table of contents over here. This is a fantastic book. In other words, if you want to begin your Gomorrah studies and you don't know what's really happening, who's who, how it all works, this book gives a great guideline system. So that when you open up that Gemara, you already have at your fingertips a knowledge of who are the Tanaim? Who are the Amuraim? What exactly does that mean, Tanaim, Amuraim? How does the concept of debate work? And who wins the arguments anyway between this rabbi and that rabbi? And where did it all come from? And how was it all transmitted? And so on and so forth. This book makes it easy to understand all of those things. Now we're going to pick up the Gemara itself. Okay, we're moving ahead. As we pick up the Gemara itself, I want to point out a fantastic book that everybody needs to get. It's the biggest win. As you'll see, my book has also simply fallen apart. You can see what's happened to it. The whole book has simply fallen apart over here because I've used this book again and again and again. And even today, sometimes I will refer every now and again to a word or something that I might not be aware of or have forgotten or want a better insight into how to use the word, whatever it is. And of course, the um, wonderful thing that he's got in this book here is also charts of the weights and currencies, how to convert one currency to the next. When you're learning the Talmud and you're not, you're not dealing with dollars and cents and you're not dealing with pounds and euros, but instead you're dealing with the particular, uh, uh, the weights and the, and the, uh, and the, and the, the economy of what was in those days. So you need a guideline of what everything is worth. How much is a Zuz really worth? What is a Prita? So he describes over here exactly what the worth of all of these things are. In addition, there's a fantastic map at the end of the book which shows one exactly who lived when, and you can even, it has a transparency that sits over it so that one can see where the modern places are today relative to what it was in those days. All I can tell you is when one starts out in studying Talmud, this Siyata Ligamara, written by Rabbi Arye Carmel, who was the golden student of Rabbi Eliyahu Desla, the great also, Mashkiach of Panovich, he wrote the well-known set of books known as the Miktav Meiliyahu, some fantastic books in Musar, 
understanding how to improve one's growth. And so he was the star student. And he, in fact, translated those works. If you've seen the book Strive for Truth, he was responsible for translating those works. He was a, a, a rabbi of immense proportions, a very great man and a great teacher as well, having taught so many pupils. And certainly at the time when he wrote this book, you know, there was no internet and uh, there, there wasn't the availability of books as it has come out today. 40, 50 years later, whenever this book was written, the first time, I think it was about 50 years ago. And uh, let me just see here, it was published originally in 1971. That's over 40 years ago when the first one was, uh, nearly, 50, nearly 50 years ago when the first one was published, this first edition of the Siyat and the Gemara. And in those days, when a person came close to studying Gemara, close to Torah, and he was new to it all, he had no clue how to begin. There was no internet to look up a word or to ask and ask the rabbi, send in a question and find out an answer. Rather, he needed some sort of system to get started. And if he didn't have a rebbe who was watching him 24 hours a day in his progress, what did he do? He picked up a book like this. And this has always been, to me, the starting book for studying Gemara. Anybody who wants to get a start in Gemara, get yourself the Siyata de Gemara. I'm not going to tell you where to get it from. You can choose wherever you find the cheapest place to get it from. Help yourself. Enjoy. But I'm just referring you to this particular book, which I found to be outstanding. And I think that you will thoroughly enjoy it. And you will, it will probably end up turning it into the condition of a book that is similar to mine. As I say, my book was purchased over 30 years ago. Let us take a look now. We go one step further in our learning of Gemara. Here is another book, which you'll see has also become a little bit ruined. Well, you know, I made Aliyah and also in the process of having come from South Africa and with all the packaging that went with it. And not only that, but in the addition to that, we've moved numerous times. And every time that the movers uh, put everything together, so it doesn't matter how I set it all up, the books get graunched and, uh, and, and used up like this. But on the whole, I've certainly used this book enough times to turn it into the condition that you see here. This particular work, Understanding the Talmud, a systematic guide to Talmudic structure and methodology, written by Rabbi Yitzchak Feigenbaum. Feigenbaum, Feigenbaum, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. And, and, and this is from Darche Noam, the Yeshiva Darche Noam. And in this work, what he does is he makes it easy for the student who is coming to the Gemara for the first time and doesn't know quite what to do. He makes it easy for him to, as he tackles the Gemara, understand the key words of the Gemara. Because learning the Gemara is not just about translating word for word, but rather one needs to see a word as it appears. Matkif. Well, what does matkif mean? It's a question. Yeah, but what type of a question? It's an, an, was it an, an, an attack question? Was it a simple information question? What type of a question was being asked? Itaima, well, what does that mean? What does the expression mean? Ibailahu, and they raised a, a dilemma from them, and the question was asked, well, what type of question? Was it an infor, inform, um, informative question? Was it a question that related to uh, also a tech question? Oh, what type of question? How do I know when the question begins, when the question ends? How do I know when the quote should have preceded the question or the quote follows after the question? With, when the answer comes about, is the answer given and then a question discusses that answer? Or is it that the question is given and then an answer is given which comes about after that, another question and another rabbi intrudes onto the question and says, well, maybe not this, maybe, how do I know the direction of the Gemara as I'm making my way through the Gemara? Now, what you would do is you would get this book, Understanding the Talmud, and as you see over here, I'm opening it up only to show you what is inside, not for purposes of copying or copyright protection. I'm not doing it for that purpose at all. I'm just opening up so that you can get an idea of what the book looks like inside. And you'll see over there how he takes the word, the key word, and then he gives a flow chart so that one can understand exactly how the key word works in the structure of the Gemara. And at the end of the Gemara, at the end of this book, he actually takes a sugya, a couple of sugyot, a sections in the Gemara, and he takes us through the Gemara, showing us exactly how the Gemara is plotted out so that it becomes an exciting episode. It's like, it's a story that's taking place. And I need to follow the discussion that's taking place. It's not just a case of that, the, uh, I'm reading the translation and the translation says X, Y, and Z, and that's very nice. 
and I know exactly what it's all about. But unfortunately, I didn't get to understand the Gemara, and I want to understand the Gemara. In order to do that, I must understand the language of the Gemara. As I said before, the Siyata Li Gemara, the eight to Talmud study, is an outstanding work which will give those key words. This book takes it to another level and will help you to understand that page of Gemara as you work through it. It's a fantastic book. Make sure you've got it in your library. Let's take a look at some other uh, important works. One work over here that has also helped me tremendously is the Practical Talmud Dictionary by Rabbi Yitzhak Frank. A fantastic work which gives us a dictionary of Aramaic terms and makes it easy for us to understand, in fact, also some of the key words in the Gemara and other words as well, as you'll see over here. And sometimes, as you see over here, giving examples of where it appears. And it could be that in the particular sukya of Gemara that you're studying, you'll see that particular quote in this book. That's what makes it so fantastic. In addition to that, he gives uh, various in, in introductions to how it all works. And it's very nice. In addition to this, he has another book, which I don't have in my library, which is Grammar for Gemara. And I strongly suggest that if you're interested in learning about the grammar structure of the Aramaic language, to obtain that book as well. So these are all outstanding works. You need to have them in your library if you're going to succeed in your journey of learning the Gemara. Of course, again, let me clarify, we're talking to people who want to grow in studying the Gemara to understand it for themselves. If all you want is the idea of working through the page of Gemara every single day, there are some fantastic works, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, which you can read and enjoy. And if you hear a shiur being given online and you want to just sit for half an hour or an hour and enjoy the page of Gemara, then good for you, enjoy it. We're speaking to the person who says to himself, I want to learn how to master the Gemara. I want to be able to read those words myself. And I want to understand the words that I am reading, the discussion that is taking place, and the flow of the discussion so that I know where I am heading to. Okay, the next book that I'm suggesting is the Milon Arami Ivri, which also appears in English as Milon Arami Angli, in other words, the Aramaic English dictionary. It was translated. I don't have the translation. I only have the, uh, the, Hebrew, the Hebrew work, but it also is another comprehensive dictionary from Aramaic to Hebrew, and it just makes it easy to follow the structure. Of course, you need to know Hebrew, but if you know the Hebrew and then you read the Aramaic, you can also see the connection between the words. One of the things when one learns Aramaic is that Aramaic is closely tied with Hebrew. Not entirely, but there are certain things that are quite similar. And if one starts to pay attention to the similarities, then as we read the words in the Aramaic, we often start to click automatically and say, I know what that word is because I identify it with the Hebrew word. And it makes it that much easier to deal with. Okay, some other important things to get for your library to be successful in your Gemara study, of course, is the number one dictionary always used for I don't know how many years, still used today, everybody is gaining tremendously from it, is the well-known Marcus Jastrow Dictionary. And of course, this dictionary um, contains every single word in your Gemara. So basically, when you know this dictionary, you can read the entire Gemara. And that's it. This is how many words there are in Gemara. So basically, this is what we have to learn. Here is our mission. We have to get through all of these words over here. If you learn one page a day, it will take you, let's see, 1,721 days. If you can learn one page a day, it'll take you 1,721 days. You'll get through the entire Gemara and you'll know all the Aramaic in the Gemara. Of course, for those of us who don't have 1,721 days to go through and the time to learn each page separately, we open up the Gemara and we learn it as we see it and many words become apparent to us. And especially if we have a little bit of help on the side, it becomes easier to learn. But certainly if one gets stuck and one doesn't know a word, open up the Jastro Dictionary and you will probably find your answer. I must warn you that for some odd reason, known to nobody, the Jastro Dictionary was written from left to right. So the first Aleph appears on page one and the Taf to the end goes to page 1721. So of course, if you're interested in growing in your Gemara, you must have a Jastro Dictionary nearby and whenever you get stuck, look up the words. The dictionary is available online for those who want to see it online. 
And let me just remind you at this point in time that if you visit my website, www.lovingkindness.co, I have a page called Terra Websites, and it is devoted to some of the most fantastic websites that you will find online. And amongst those sites, there is a tremendous amount of resources that you're going to find on that page, which will give you access to assistance that you may need in studying Gemara, whether it is diagrams that you need to help you get through the page, or vocabulary, or understanding the translation of a Tosafot, or Rashi, or whatever it is that you're learning that you can't grasp straight away. There are so many resources available online that I've taken a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time, and I've prepared all of these pages that I have found to be exceptionally beneficial. And I leave it there for the public. If you go to my site, www.lovingkindness.co, and you click on that button that says Torah websites, you will see a, 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 a host of fantastic websites in all areas of Torah. These are really authentic sites, beautiful sites, sincere sites, Authentic Torah Judaism, we're not going in the direction of anything that is outside of mainstream normative Judaism. That's what you're going to find there. And if you're struggling in your Gemara, do check out that page because that's where you're going to find these great resources that will help you to understand that page of Gemara. But we're not finished yet. For those people who are struggling and they don't know quite what to do with their learning, there is a small, a smallish book called Breakthrough. I hope that it's still available. This book is at least 30 years old in my library, written by Svi Zobin, if I pronounce his name correctly, Zobin. And in it, he discusses problems that the new student finds when he studies Gemara. And this can be anything from uh, translating something, not knowing how to translate, to things like understanding the language, or the language skills necessary, or arguments or what the arguments about where am i going wrong when i study why am i not understanding it this book gives an overview of an approach to take so that uh, one can find out where one is struggling and how to improve oneself now we come to the next section which i find to be very important as well no less important than everything else i've been discussing and there are two types of people that can take the direction that i'm about to speak about now the first, part, first type of person is a person who says, I don't really want to learn how to learn the Gemara, but I want to keep up with the Daf Yomi. What should I do? Which is the best for me? What type of Gemara should I be learning from? And at this point in time, I want to bring out so that everybody knows I'm not going to advertise one more than the other because I find that at different times, one will get something out of each one that one won't get from the other. But ultimately, it's a personal decision. And here I am to introduce you to two gemarot, which are available to the English-speaking public, as everybody probably knows. But if you don't know it, that's okay, because I'm going to introduce you to it. The first is the uh, Talmud Bavli over here, as you see the Art Scroll edition. Here I'm looking at Tractate Sota, and in the Art Scroll edition, you will find an introduction that appears at the beginning of each chapter. And then, of course, you can see on the one side of the page, you can see the original text. And on the other side of the page, you can see the English translation with the notes and a host of notes underneath, which help to understand the text better. It's mostly for almost totally um, based upon the commentary of Rashi. So one will see Rashi's translations in those notes. And of course, the, the, the way that the text is translated within the text itself is, of course, based on Rashi. And who better to use as a translation source than Rashi, who, of course, is responsible for helping us to understand the text, even if we were reading it in the original Aramaic. This is a fantastic set of books to get. But as I point out here, you've got to like it for yourself. So if you go to the bookstore, open up your art scroll Gemara, because of course it costs money. Let's say this Gemara costs 150 shekels. I'm speaking in Israeli terms. Well, it's 150 shekels of my money. And I want to know that it's not just the money, but I'm going to be spending time learning this Gemara. Do I profit more in my learning experience from reading this Gemara? Or would I profit more from reading another Gemara, which I'm going to introduce to you in just a moment? 
think about it before you buy the Gemara. Because if you're investing all that time and you turn around afterwards and say, I didn't really learn it as well as I had wanted to or in the way that I like to learn, then of course that time has been spent at a bit of a loss. You didn't waste any time, God forbid. But you've lost the time in learning from a text that you might feel might be better for you. And therefore you need to weigh out whether this is going to be the better choice for you. Or alternatively, whether you're going to go for the new edition, which is available fully now, which is the Steinsaltz Korin Talmud Bavli. If you've seen my Shi'urim, you will notice that I give Shi'urim using this Talmud. And by the way, you see that it has already torn on the top over here. One of the things that I'm certainly not happy about in this Gemara is the way that they chose to use this plastic on top of the Gemara, because as you can see, it breaks Within, a, within just a few uses, it already begins to tear. You put it back into the shelf, it tears. You, your hands become a little bit hot and sweaty while you're holding the book, perhaps. And it becomes, uh, as you see, it has certain marks on it and eventually it tears. And that's just disappointing because it loses some of its beauty because ultimately I might have to throw this away, this piece of plastic, and I've lost the beauty of what this Gemara looks, looks like. So I'm not quite sure why they decided to do that. But this is what it is anyway. The Gemara itself, of course, is outstanding. Translated by Rabbi Adin Steinsaltz. Of course, he originally did the full translation from Aramaic to Hebrew, and then afterwards embarked upon this project, which was completed just a few months ago. Not so long ago, it was completed. This is a beautiful set to have, just as the art scroll is also a beautiful set to, to have, but it is done differently to the art scroll. And that is what I wanted to point out. You need to decide for yourself which direction to take, which Gemara is more beautiful for your purposes when you study. Did you like that style of the art scroll with the page on the side and then the translation with the words in between, uh, inter interlinear translation with the notes? Or perhaps you enjoy the style of the Steinsaltz, which gives us the uh, original text on the side, as you can see, and then also gives the translation with notes, just like art scroll also does, and then you'll notice on the side, there are all sorts of things like notes, background information, halakha, practical halakha, uh, information about the biographies of various rabbis. There is another page with photographs, photographs to help understand the particular themes or the discussion that's taking place in the Gemara. Now, whatever you enjoy, you enjoy. If you'd like some assistance and you want to know which would be better for you, Send me an email, lovingkindness.co, and go to my site, contact me through the contact form, and be in touch, and I would be happy to discuss more about which edition would probably be best for you. Each edition suits different people according to their desires. For me, sometimes, I must tell you, every now and again, I'll refer from the one to the other, because sometimes I feel I can get from the one what I can't get from the other. But ultimately, we all have a budget that we can work with, hopefully some sort of budget, even if it's one book a year, whatever it is, well, when we buy that book, we must decide, is that the book that I really want? I'm going to be spending and investing hours and tens of hours and perhaps hundreds of hours going through this book. And I want to know that I'm going to get the best for my money and my time. Now, at the back of the Steinsaltz edition, you will also get the original page as it appears, together with all of the Nikod. That means all of the dots, so that you can see all the vowels. And you will see over there that the vowels also appear in the, in the Rashi. You can see over there in the inside, in Rashi, you've got the vowels. But in Tosafot, there are no vowels, but it's certainly a beautiful print and it's easy to use. So if you are interested in learning Gemara, uh, or you're struggling or anything, these books can help tremendously to make your journey an easier one and a more enjoyable one. Ultimately, it's your choice. Where do you want to go? If you follow my Shi'urim online, you will see that I'm using this stand out. You can see how it works and you can see the enjoyment that we get from using it because it just works so nicely for our purposes. Now, that brings us really to the end of this discussion and this video. We started off describing what the Gemara is and how we got from Gemara to Halakha and we got to this idea of where am I going? And what do I want out of my learning? And from that, we discussed some very important books, which I hope 
will be of benefit to you. If you're serious about progressing in your study of Talmud, these are some of the books that just simply come naturally to me that I say, get these books because as you page through them, you will begin to see how the Gemara will come to life because you will start to gain the keys that are necessary in order to open up this treasure test of the words of our sages that teach us from simple halakhot to the secrets of creation. And if you can take it as far as you want to, and you can spend as much time learning a page of Gemara, and it can never get old. And the more that you go over that page of Gemara, the more sense it starts to make, the easier it becomes to understand. And all of a sudden, the story takes on a whole a whole nature of its own. But that's up to you and the effort that you put in to your learning. If, of course, you've enjoyed this shiur, this lesson and insight into what I see as being important in the books to learn and everything, and you want to know more, well, send me an email, as I said, www.lovingkindness.co. Use the contact form. Tell me about yourself. What are you interested in? Where are you coming from? How do you want to grow? And of course, if you'd like to learn with me privately, then please, by all means, let's set up a time to learn. We can take that page of Gamora as slowly as you want to, working through it, understanding the text, understanding the vocabulary together. Test yourself by having only the page of Gamora in front of you without all the distractions and try to read through that page word by word as best as you can do. When you get stuck, I'll help you as best as I can. And together, we're going to grow and teach each other about what the Torah is, what the Gemara is, and we're going to gain so much from each other. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please do me a favor and click on the like button in the YouTube underneath this video. You see there's a like button uh, of a thumb. Click on that thumbs, thumbs up and also click on the subscribe channel if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. Click on the bell button to be notified of future Shirim so that as the shiur comes out, you will be notified on your phone or on your computer that I have now set up a new shiur. It's available and please listen to it. Please feel free to make comments below. I'm always interested in positive comments, comments that assist us all, comments of questions that help us to grow further. Those are the comments, of course, that I'm looking for. All the other comments are most of the time uh, unnecessary and um, don't accomplish anything. Please share this video with people who you feel may gain from the information that I've shared. Share it with your friends, share it with your family. And if you feel that you have gained something from this, I'd like to share with you that everything that we do over here on this channel that you see, my website, everything is done by ourselves. And this is the activities that we're involved in. We rely upon you for our support and the help that you give us to partner with us so that we can achieve these goals together. In return, you become a partner also in these videos that come out and all the activities that we do. Sometimes people come to us, they want to learn Torah, and the first thing that they say is, I have no money, please teach me the whole of Shas and Poskim, please teach me all the secrets of Kabbalah, I have no money, don't ask me for it. Well, you know, we'd be delighted to teach as many people as, wants to, as they want to come and learn, but we don't have the budget for that, unfortunately. So we say, if you come through as, a, as an outside person and you say you'd like to support the activities that we're involved in, that means you'll be helping us to take on those students so that we can ultimately help them to study more of Torah, gain these skills that they need, and to become Jews who are observant and who love the Torah, love studying, love observing the Torah, and want to grow and share this Torah with even more people. Let us not forget that Rabbi Rabbi Akiva, even though he, he didn't know any Torah by the time he was 40, when he started studying Torah, look what he became and look how much he shared with the world as a result of that Torah that he studied. And each of us has that potential to reach those levels. Let us not have to turn down people who want to learn because they lack the financial means to do it. Instead, let us support each other in the activities that we best do so that ultimately all of us can gain from each other in the best possible way. With all of that, I say thanks again for joining me for this lesson. I hope you've gained something from it. Please be in touch. I'd be delighted to be in touch with you about any areas of Torah, about life, about books, sharing the beauty of the books that we learn. And uh, that's it. Until my next shiur, I wish you everything of the best. And I look forward to being in touch with you again in the near future. Take care. Wishing you the best. 
Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye. I'm Eliyahu Ushir from www.lovingkindness.co coming to you from the holy city of Yerushalayim. See you soon. Bye-bye.